When you think of the greatest battle between Megatheropods, you often see the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Spinosaurus being put against each other. Well, let's push out the clear loser of that battle and replace it with one of the few theropods which can challenge the Tyrant Lizard King, this being Giganotosaurus, the King of the North against the King of the South. Who will be the one to take the crown? Let's find out. As the current king of the lizards, we'll start off with the Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, also known as the T-Rex, was known as the apex predator of North America during its time. When it was an adult, it was large enough to be safe from just about every carnivore. This theropod measured an approximate average of 12 meters in length and 3.7 meters at the hips. It also weighed an average of around 8.8 .8 tons. However, that's of course up to debate. The higher reliable limits of Tyrannosaur pushes it above the 10 ton range. Some of the larger reaches from 11 to 12 tons. Now to be able to hold up all this weight and move, it had to have an equally impressive skeletal structure, being robust enough to hunt and fight, yet light enough for it to catch its prey. And they sure are muscular, as it's been suggested by paleontologist Denver Fowler that the Tyrannosaur was strong enough to tear a Triceratops' head from its body. For whatever reason that may be, doesn't matter. It's impressive nonetheless. Now let us take a look at the giant lizard of the south. The average giga was impressive, being around 12.4 meters in length and 3.8 meters at the hips. It would have reached around the 8.5 tonne range, meaning that it was clearly able to rival the Tyrannosaur in pure mass. However, when we look at its reliable upper limits, it seems that the Giga would have passed the 9 tonne range and even been between 10.1 to 10.4 tonnes. With this increased mass, it would have also grown longer and been taller, being around 13.5 metres in length. And don't get me wrong, the Giganotosaurus is still a unit. However, when comparing it with the skeleton of the T-Rex, it's clear that the Giga had a slimmer build. So while we're on the topic about the Giga's slimmer build, let's talk about its speed. Older studies such as from Ernesto Blanco suggested that the Giga could have reached around 50 kilometers an hour. However, that's just not the case. Later studies showed that there was a limit to how quick a megatheropod could move. And let's be honest, just by looking at its structure, it's evident that due to its silica body, it would have been able to move quicker than the Tyrannosaurus. I'd even place its speed around 25 kilometers an hour, though it could be a bit more or a bit less. As for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, well, we can say for certain that it was not a speed demon. Using William Seller's article and biomechanical regenerations, it is estimated that the Tyrannosaurus Rex could have reached around 19 kilometers an hour. Now, this isn't too surprising considering how thick of a build the T-Rex had, so can't be perfect in everything. And though it's clear that the T-Rex was significantly slower than the Giga, who was more agile? Well, to assess the agility of the two, we can use Eric Snively's paper. This paper was based on the agility of theropods. Looking at their results, it's evident that the Giga was almost twice as less agile as the Rex, despite the Rex being slightly heavier. I will clarify that this study specifically looks at the lower rotational inertia for rapid turns, but it still supports the fact that the Tyrannosaur was superior in agility. But alright, now we move on to one of the most important categories, weaponry. Now, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that the Tyrannosaurus's main choice of weaponry was its jaws. These jaws were the definition of quality evolution. Biomechanical studies have provided support that the Tyrannosaurus was capable of closing its jaws with the bone-destroying bite of 8,000 to 61,000 newtons. Now, yeah, yeah, I know what you must be thinking. How do we have this massive gap of 8,000 to 61,000 newtons? Well, it just depends on what study you use. However, a majority of studies, such as Sakamoto, suggest that the average T-Rex bite could reach around 48,500 newtons. Another study by AJ Rowe and Snively in 2021 placed the T-Rex's bite at 61,500 newtons. Everybody knows the bone crushing potential of its jaws, but their teeth were actually serrated. Now they may not have been as serrated as many other carnivores specked in that specific area, but it's still impressive that for a dinosaur that's focused on bite force, it still has such serrated teeth. There's also been debate whether or not the Tyrannosaurus would thrash its head around once it got a hold of its prey. This would inflict the maximum amount of serration damage it possibly could, however, this isn't a confirmed hunting strategy by any means. Its skull could have been potentially used as a weapon. This comes from Jack Horner's discovery of potential evidence of pachystosis in the skull of the T-Rex. If you don't know what that is, it is when bone growth increases and the bone density within the skull also increases. This potentially means they could have used their skulls to ram opponents. I mean, we can mention the Rex's front limbs, which let's face it, they're pretty small. And yeah, look, I hear people bring up the fact that it's able to lift up 180 kilograms, but think about it like this. The creature weighs eight tons. That's not anything special. Moving to the Giganotosaurus, we see that it's quite similar with the Tyrannosaur in being specifically specified in an advanced skull. The Giga wasn't particularly specced into the bone crunching bite like the T-Rex. 
but rather evolved to be highly serrated, far more than the Tyrannosaur. This allowed them to slice through prey, causing the maximum amount of bleed damage possible. In the same study mentioned before by AJ Rowe and Snively, they estimated the bite force of the Giganotosaurus could have reached 25,000 newtons. Now, yeah, I guess that doesn't really match up with the 61,000 newtons of the Tyrannosaur, but still, that's just because it wasn't meant for shattering bone. Furthermore, the Giganotosaurus's neck and skull structure meant that it had a greater degree of rotation than the Tyrannosaur. It was also able to close and open its jaws in a faster succession than the Rex, meaning that they were able to get more bites in within a shorter amount of time. Seems its strategy this fight would be to keep its distance and deliver as many bites as possible. Now I guess we could also talk about its arms, but similarly to the Rex, they weren't that big and hence they wouldn't be too useful in theropod combat. As for the next section, I think we'll just clump intelligence and senses all together. This is because it's pretty simple stuff and it isn't the most decisive factor to this fight. There have been many studies on the Tyrannosaur's intelligence, such as by Susan Hazel, which showed that the T-Rex may have actually been quite the intelligent theropod. This is based on their neuron density, which the Tyrannosaur had a high count, rivaling even modern day primates, such as baboons. Now, this doesn't directly translate into intelligence, but I'd still say that they were more intelligent than people would actually expect. Also, in Graham Hughes' 2019 study, it was proposed that the olfactory capabilities of the T-Rex were double of that of the turkey vulture. For context, turkey vultures possess the ability to detect decomposing bodies by sensing minute gases emitted from considerable heights. Contrary to the portrayal in Jurassic Park, Tyrannosaurus exhibited superior eyesight. This is characterized by enhanced head and eye movements. According to Stevens' 2006 research, the T-Rex's vision surpassed that of even current day hawks. Now onto the Giganotosaurus, and I'll be honest, he just doesn't have that much research on him. It's likely he had the same intelligence level as the Tyrannosaur, probably a couple notches below, because its brain case was smaller. This means it had less space to fill neurons in. And also with limited research on the Giga's capability of senses, I believe while yes, they did still have impressive and well-developed olfactory sense, it still would be a couple notches below the Rex. And now we've reached our last factor, this being battle intelligence. And I'll be honest, the Tyrannosaurus is an experienced and intelligent fighter. As when we take a look at its ecosystem, we can clearly see that it took on some of the most developed and dangerous prey around. The most famous example of which has to be the Triceratops. This living weapon weighed from 5 to 10 tons, which actually rivals the weight of the sauropods the Giganotosaurus hunted. With horns that reached over a meter long, they could fatally wound a rex if impaled. It also had a frill which provided a natural protection for its neck. Clearly, agility would be important to get around said frill. Then we move on to the Ankylosaurus, which was an armory on legs. It could have reached around 4 to 8 tons, and with a club tail, it could take out anyone's knees if given the opportunity. A Tyrannosaurus would have to be either extremely confident or extremely down bad to take on something like this. And of course, we can't forget the Edmontosaurus, which is a hadrosaur that was likely twice as quick as the Tyrannosaurus Rex, yet would have challenged it in the weight department. This shows the Tyrannosaurus was able to hunt large yet quick adversaries. And while we're at it, I guess we'll mention the fact that the Tyrannosaurus may have hunted young Alamosauruses. Although, as far as the adults go, I would sorely doubt that they would try it alone. Even in a pack, they would struggle as sauropods reaching the 30 ton range tend to be a bit too much for even the largest predators to handle. I will note though that the Tyrannosaur of the South that coexisted with the Alamosaurus may have actually been a separate species known as Tyrannosaur macraeensis. But there's still a lot of debate with that, so we'll just leave it be. Tyrannosaurus also had the distinct advantage of being one of the only theropods at this point in time which has clear evidence of interspecies combat. One of the most famous examples of this has to go to the Tyrannosaur Stan. He received a broken neck where two vertebrae fused together and a third one became immobilized by extra bone growth, which means that he not only healed from this injury, but likely thrived afterwards, considering the amount of healing which occurred. Now you may wonder, hey, how do we know a T-Rex caused this injury? Well, I don't know too many animals which could, well, get around a Tyrannosaur's neck and then leave a Tyrannosaur's size hoof mark into said neck. So uh, yeah, it was a T-Rex that did it. Considering Tyrannosaurs would have combated each other for one reason or another, whether it be food, territory, or whatever, they show evidence of surviving said fights, even when they should be critical injuries that should have killed them. This just goes to show how durable these creatures evolved to be. And I mean, let's be honest, if conflict was this common, then it's likely that Tyrannosaurs were quite experts at taking on other large theropods. But onto the Giganotosaurus. These theropods evolved to take on some of the most dangerous prey to ever evolve, this being sauropods. Now I've stated in every video, and I probably will continue stating in every video, that the Giganotosaurus did not in fact hunt Argentinosaurus, 
as they didn't coexist. Rather, the sauropods that we know were on the menu were around the Giganotosaurus' own mass, whether that be a bit lighter or a bit heavier. One of these sauropods was Lamaeosaurus, which according to a researcher of paleontology Gregory S. Paul, weighed around 7 tons and could have reached over 13 meters in length. There was also the larger Antosaurus, which seems to have reached around 14 tons, with it likely exceeding this weight. It also reached over 15 meters in length and 5 meters in height. Now, for a Giganotosaurus to take on these sauropods, they'd have to be very skilled, fast, and effective predators. You don't see many carnivores specking into taking down the largest creatures to walk the planet. There were also smaller sauropods they would have likely hunted, as well as an indeterminate titanosaur. Now, this titanosaur would have easily outweighed the 14 ton andosaur, probably being the largest sauropod that the Giganotosaurus would have coexisted with. However, it's still a debate whether or not the titanosaur coexisted with Giganotosaurus, and if it did, the Giganotosaurus would have had to rely on pack hunting as their sheer size wouldn't allow for a single Giga to even take them down, even with mastered knowledge and experience of taking down sauropods. Now it makes more sense why the Giganotosaurus was more slimly built than the Tyrannosaurus, as it needed to be fast to take down sauropods, inflicting bleed damage, tearing through them, or maybe just taking down the smaller ones outright, speed would have been highly important. Now though they don't have the same evidence that the Tyrannosaur has, the Giganotosaurus would have undoubtedly had to deal with interspecies conflict, whether that be over resources, territory, or mating rights, conflicts would have occurred, and with that it would have assisted in their experience to take on other large theropods. There were also smaller abelosaurids they would have had to take on, but these were maybe a ton in weight. They wouldn't have really contributed to their experience, especially when compared to a Tyrannosaurus. But we've gone through the factors, now it's time to get onto the winner. And just to start off, both of these predators are arguably the greatest terrestrial creatures to ever evolve. When we look at their advantages, the Tyrannosaur would take brute strength, weight, agility, bite force, stamina, intelligence, senses, and battle IQ. The Giganotosaurus takes speed, length, bite effectiveness, limb strength, experience, and height. I think what people need to understand with these types of battles is yeah, we can make an assumption of who would win most of the time, but this isn't really a species versus species battle. For example, if we put a lion against a mouse, clearly the lion's going to win. But rather when we have two very closely sized apex predators, it's hard to say who's going to win every single time. And plus, if we look at it a bit deeper, some people may use the 8% larger gigatypes, which would get it to around 13 tons. Now if we use that and we put it against the average T-Rex, well it would have a 5 ton advantage which I mean a 5 ton advantage would be massive and would clearly mean the Giga would win. And I'm sure the same would be for certain Tyrannosaur remains suggesting that it would get to the 12 plus ton range. This is why I think it's better to use the average of each of these species to make it a clear fight rather than using outliers and unconfirmed sizes. And to be fair, even if we use their larger, more reliable sizes, there is maybe a ton difference to maybe a few hundred kilogram difference between the two, which sounds like a lot, but isn't too much considering these are 8 to 10 ton animals. So on average, their weights were very close. Now between the two, this is a very close fight. The Giga's speed mixed with its serrated teeth and faster biting speeds makes it a dangerous adversary. But the T-Rex being slightly heavier with a stronger bite and also twice the agility of the Giga would give it a distinct advantage. The best bet for the Giga would be to try and use its speed to get as many bites in as possible and to back off to let the Rex bleed. But we gotta understand these are animals so who knows if a new bite bite bite, run off for a bit, bite bite bite. And even then the Rex's superior agility may help it to tag the Giga when it gets too close. I think right now considering the T-Rex had superior brute force, durability and the rest, it does have a distinct advantage. The T-Rex is capable of sustaining bites from other T-Rexes which have a far greater power output than that of the Giga. Hence meaning that if the Giga wanted to win, it'd likely have to get lucky with a nicely placed bite on an artery or something very critical. And the T-Rex won't just lay there and let the Giga get free bites in. Once the opportunity presents itself, the Giganotosaurus might get done for. The T-Rex would take the opportunity, bite the Giga, and it could be open with one bite. But I don't want to make this sound one-sided. It's a very, very, very close fight. No matter who wins, the other is going to be severely injured. But I believe with all these factors taken into consideration, the Tyrannosaurus Rex would win around 60 to 70% of the time. The winner of this battle and still reigning king of the dinosaurs is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. If you all enjoyed, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Also comment below and check out my channel all about fiction if you're interested in that. I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.